Yeah. I just now put on top, but I hope they didn't put it underneath. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Dear brothers and sisters, please stand. We will start our way of the cross. God of mercy and compassion, look with pity upon me. Father, let me call the Father. This thy child return to thee. Jesus Lord, I ask for mercy. Let me not implore in vain. All my sins I now detest them. Help me not in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you willed your Son to undergo for us the humiliation of the cross, to deliver us from the power of evil. We pray to you, fill our hearts with love for Christ and sorrow for sin, and grant that we may gain the grace of his resurrection. Together, my Lord and my Redeemer, you have shown us how to live by your life and, and by your death. When we compare your life to ours, we start asking questions about ourselves. Sometimes, Lord, the ocean of life seems so wide, so deep, and our ship and our souls are small. Help us to grow and to understand you and ourselves. We ask you to help us to accept life and everything that comes to it. Amen. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We bless you, O Lord, and glorify your name. Because by your passion, death, and resurrection, you have saved the world. It is Friday, early in the morning. Jesus is brought from Caiaphas, the high priest, to Pontius Pilate, the governor on trumped-up charges of treason, and is condemned to death. Jesus had nothing but love for people, yet he was condemned to die a brutal death. Lord Jesus, how can I judge others and fail to be understanding and loving? Help me to see the people in my life through your eyes, not through the eyes of conscious violence. Please teach me by the station to have a feel to each and every person I meet, rather than a head of heart by my virtuous criticism and condemnation. At the cross her station keeping Stood the mournful mother weeping Close to Jesus to the last The second station, Jesus carries the cross we bless you, O Lord, and glorify your name. Because by your passion, death, and resurrection, we have saved the world. A heavy cross is thrust into Jesus' arms. He is ordered to carry it to the site of his execution. Jesus accepts the cross. Carrying it by himself, he goes out to the place of the skull, Golgotha, to be crucified with two other men. The weight of the cross shows heavily on the brow and the face of Jesus. 
yet he moves forward without a word of complaint. Lord Jesus, The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We bless you, O Lord, and glorify your name. Because by your passion, death, and resurrection, you have saved the world. The cross is heavy, and the road to Calvary, the road to Golgotha, the place of death is long. Jesus, weary from lack of sleep, loneliness, fear, and the beatings he receives, slumps to the ground. Soldiers quickly drag him to his feet again. Lord Jesus, we know how often I fall trying to follow you. Yet you are always there to lift me up. Help me always to trust in your loving care. For me, never, never let me become so discouraged that I give in to failure. Help me always to know my strength through my weaknesses. Oh, how sad and sorry The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We bless you, O Lord, and glorify your name. Because, because by your passion, death, 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 and resurrection, you have saved, saved the world. Mary was waiting for her dear son to pass. Her silent presence was great comfort to Jesus. She is teaching us to feel and to show sympathy for those who suffer. There is no need for many words. Our friendly presence or deeds of kindness can convey our loving care for our suffering neighbour. Dear, Dear Lord, your, your mother's grief was surpassed by her love for you. So often you come to me in others, and their love gives me new life. Help me to see how often you love me through the people in my life. Christ above in torment hands, she beneath me holds her pains. The fifth station, Simon of Serene helps Jesus carry his cross. We bless you, O Lord, and glorify your name. Because by your passion, death, and resurrection, you have saved the world. Jesus is faltering under the load. The soldiers fear that he might die along the way. They see Simon of Serene put the cross on his shoulders too as he stands behind Jesus and make him help shoulder the load. Lord Jesus, Jesus sometimes, sometimes I'm, I'm indifferent, indifferent to, the to the needs of others in my life. I even neglect those whom I love. Help, help me to see that loving others is the surest way to find, to find you in my life. life. Is there one who would not be well in misery so deep? Christ, dear mother, to be whole. The 
the sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We bless you, O Lord, and glorify your name. Because by your love, passion, and death and resurrection, you have saved the world. This lady showed great determination and courage in waiting for Jesus and wiping his face in spite of the hostile crowd. She sees only the person in need and gives help without thinking of the possible consequences to herself. How often are we not prevented from doing good by fear of what people may say or think? Lord Jesus, at times I'm afraid to reach out to others. I do nothing when I should act. I say nothing when I should speak out. Give me a deeper and more courageous faith. Help me to trust that you are with me. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We bless you, O Lord, and glorify your name. Because by your passion, death, and resurrection, you have saved the world. Jesus falls again, despite the help of Simon. He lies sprawled in the dirt, sweat beating on his face, mingling with the blood from the cuts on his forehead and the dust of these well-travelled streets. The soldiers, impatient and anxious to be over this job, roughly drag him to his feet, again cursing him. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, failure and disappointment, disappointment sometimes, sometimes lead me to despair. despair. I hide behind my pride and self-pity, withdrawing from you and others. Give me the hope I need and help me never to be afraid to begin again. Bacho 但因库你们自己记你们的子女
基督，我们朝拜你，赞美你。你应十字圣架，救赎苦事。耶稣在苦架的重压下，第三次跌倒在地。在日常生活中，我们无事处的跌倒。面对挫折时，每一次都把自己看成一位毫无价值的可怜人。如果我们不珍惜每一日，而只顾，而只是回顾以往及顾虑明天的日子，那么我们本身的形象会因每次的失败而受影响。主，你的毅力让我看到自己是多么的无助。没有你，我将一事无成。帮助我依靠你的力量，看一看我是如何的需要你，指导我不要指责自己而放弃自己。第十处，耶稣被剥去衣裳。基督，我们朝拜你，赞美你。你因十字圣架救赎普世。最后，他们来到天主也被遗弃的地方，耶稣将在此被钉死。人们把垃圾丢在这里，很匆忙的。粗鲁的，他们唾弃耶稣的所有衣物，只留给他刺果、皮剑、耻辱，尊严也不留给他。这是他的，还是我们的贫乏？我们拿了他的衣物及尊严，就像这世界上百上千的人。被社会被社会的贪婪与冷漠所剥夺了尊严一样，当我们让耶稣被剥夺一切时，已印证了我们的自私自利。主耶稣，你被残酷的羞辱，让我察觉。我是如何仰赖这个人成就、占有欲及喜好？求你教导我舍弃生活的这一切束缚，以便我能更接近你。求你教导我不要渴求生活的失望，但求我的生活充满许多爱与仁慈的举止。十字三架。基督，我们朝拜你，赞美你。你因十字圣架救赎普世。兵士们粗暴地把无情的铁钉钉进耶稣的双手和双脚。兵士们瓜分了耶稣的衣服，为了他的长衣，他们研究。耶稣的双手是为爱而张开，如今却被钉在十字架上。主耶稣，你为了不恕我的罪，受了这样残忍的苦刑，你的十字架是爱的象征。
，我要常常爱你，做你喜悦的事。十二处，耶稣在十字架上舍命。基督，我们朝拜你，赞美你。你因十字圣架救赎普世。我的子民，我为了你做了些什么，或在那里得罪了你们？有什么事情是我应该做而没有做的？我带领你们离开埃及，而你们为我准备十字架。我为了你们分开了红海，但你却用长矛来刺害我。我给了你们君王的权威，但你们给了我一顶刺冠。这已是大约第六时辰。黑暗将笼罩着大地，直到第九时辰，耶稣大声呼喊说：“一切都完了，天父，我把我的灵魂托付给你。”说着，低下头，便断了气。主，你为我们死在十字架上，教导了我们因死于自己的罪过和自私，使到我可以结救恩的果实，帮助我在爱你的当儿更能认清自己的十字架。十三处，耶稣从十字架上被卸下。基督，我们朝拜你，赞美你。你因十字圣架救赎普世。玛利亚站在十字架下，看着他的爱子惨痛的死。现在，耶稣的尸体从十字架上被卸下。放在他慈母的手中，玛利亚明白，一个人当当一个人的至亲病痛或在监狱时，心中是如何的哀伤。他是我们的痛苦之母。亲爱的救主。你把天父给你的一切交回给天父，那么天父将在你光荣的复活时百倍的归还给你。主，我们祈求你慷慨地接受我们所做的，让我们可以效法你在复活时更完美。第十四处，耶稣被埋葬。基督，我们朝拜你，赞美你。你因十字圣架救赎普世
耶稣的遗体被抬到墓穴。谦卑的耶稣没有被埋葬的地方，他被埋在一位陌生人的墓里。当兵士把一块大石堵住了血口。主耶稣的生命将开始新的一页。我知道，当我的生命向上主，我将成为一位，我将成为新的一个人。我的仇恨将变成爱，我的伤悲伤将变成欢乐。在绝望的地方，我可以找到希望。我的软弱变成力量。主耶稣，当我看到巨大的石头把你的墓穴堵住，我感觉到是多么的孤独，有如被遗弃。虽然有时在日常生活中，我会把你遗忘，寄远离你。但帮助我时常相信你爱的灵在，教导我因这你的鼓励，我可以面对每天的生活，也不怕死亡。主帮助我不惧怕任何事情，除了惧怕本身。神之高显示。Together, Lord Jesus, help me to walk with you each day of my life, even to Calvary. The sorrow and joy, the pain and healings, the failures and triumphs of my life, are truly small deaths and resurrection that lead me to closeness with you. Give me the faith and trust I need to walk with you always. Be merciful to me, O、oh、my God, and not reject my prayers. When I meet my afflictions, I call upon Thy holy name and seek with love and confidence Thine adorable face. Amen. Let us pray the Ho Holy Father's intentions. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory, Father. For us sinners now and at the hour of our death, Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, can be seated for one minute. Before you make a solemn exit after this service. I don't want to disturb your thoughts afterwards, so I just want to make a little announcements now. This morning, the Tamil-speaking youth had a passion way of the cross in、uh, acting it out. It's very well done. Moved a lot of people, and this in YouTube you can watch afterwards. Maybe before you go to bed tonight, any time. Just today is the day you should be. This our own people doing it. It's very nice. You just watch. To, to reflect a little further, and the other one is the prison ministry is having the parlor prayers for the prisoners. As I said yesterday, we are all not able to go to the prison to visit the prisoners, but maybe we could just go and spend a little moment in prayer. Those of you who are willing to go or who have the time to go. The third thing is、uh, we Christmas we have the passion. We have the pa not pageant. We have the crib. And today we have the reenactment of the passion, the journey of Jesus. We have put it at the grotto there. 
the few a lot of symbols that were used in the passion journey of Jesus so you can also go there for a few minutes after this service and somebody last night asked me father what is the dice for you know the dice that you play games snake and ladder there was one big one there somebody asked me i said you can look up in the bible so a lot of thoughts will come to you and today is the best time for you to do that and so after this service you can go and spend a little few minutes in silence maybe praying and just uh, asking the lord to, to speak to you last is also after this service some people generous people have of uh, have kindly come forward to offer some drinks and buns so you can help yourself after this service so with that i would like to wish you a holy week and a very very pleasant and blessed journey of good friday we shall start the service in a few moments time and make use of this time to be reconciled with the lord who has shed his blood for each one of us take care and god bless Please stand. The church invites us today to fully participate in the passion and death of our Savior and to be resurrected from the darkness of sin. Our service this evening will begin with the liturgy of the Word, in which the meaning of Christ's death on the cross is explained to us. Second, the veneration of the cross through this prayerful action and gesture. We embrace our Saviour in His greatest act of love for us. And finally, Holy Communion. We become one with the body given up for us and the blood shed for all. Please kneel. Please stand. O God, who by the passion of Christ, your Son, our Lord, abolish the death inherited from ancient sin by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we have borne by the law of nature the image of the man of earth, 
so by the sanctification of grace, we may bear the image of the man of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word.《伊撒伊亚先知书》，请看我的仆人必要成功，必会受尊荣，必被高举，而且极受崇敬，将有许多人对他不胜惊愕，因为他的容貌被毁伤得已不像人样，他的形状也不像人子。同样。众民族也都将对他不胜惊异，众君王在他面前都要哑口无言，因为他们看见了从未经验过的事，听见了从未听说过的事。有谁会相信我们的报道呢？上主的大能的手臂又曾向谁显示过呢？ 他在上主台前向嫩芽一般生长，又像从甘土中伸出的根苗，他没有可使我们瞻仰的俊美与华丽，也没有可使我们恋慕的仪容。他受尽了侮辱，被人遗弃，他真是个苦人儿，辗转于
天主的圣言。Thanks be to God. 
A reading from the second, sorry, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered up prayer and entreaty aloud and in silent tears to the one who had the power to save him out of death and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learned to obey through suffering, but having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. We will now have the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Congregation to participate in the character C. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kedron Valley. There was a garden there and he went into it with his disciples. Judas the traitor knew the place well, since Jesus had often met his disciples there, and he brought the cohort to this place together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with lanterns and torches and weapons. Knowing everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus, Jesus the, the Nazarene. Nazarene. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus replied, I have told you that I am he. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you gave me have I lost. Simon Peter who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. 
The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into his scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guards seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews, it is better for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known by the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest palace but peter stayed outside the door so the other disciple the one known to the high priest went out spoke to the woman who was keeping the door and brought peter in the maid on duty at the door said to peter aren't you another of the man's disciples he answered i am not now it was cold, and the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temples when all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret, but why ask me? Ask my hearers what I thought, they know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, if there is something wrong in what I said, point it out. But if there is no offence in it, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him stillborn, bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priests servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at once a cock crew. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the praetorium themselves, or they would be defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came outside to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If he were, he not, were not a criminal, a criminal we, we should, should not, not be, be handing, handing him over, over to you. you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, we are, we are not, not allowed, allowed to, to put, put a, a man, man to, to death. death. This was to fulfill the words of Jesus, which Jesus had spoken, indicating the very way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord? Or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent me being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. Pilate said, so, you are a king then? Jesus answered, It is you who say it. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth 
listen to my voice. Pilate said, Truth? What is that? And with that, he went out again to the church and said, I find no case against him, but according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Not, Not this man, man but, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a brigand. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Pilate came outside again and said to them, Look, I am going to bring him out to you to let you see that I find no case. Jesus then came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and the, guard, and the guards shouted, Crucify, Crucify him. him! Crucify, Crucify him. him! Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I can find no case against him. The Jews replied, We, we have, have a law, and according to the, to the law, he we ought, ought to die, die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. God. When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you. Jesus replied, you would have no power over me if it had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at a place called Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was Passover preparation day, about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They said, Take, take him, him away, away. Take, take him, him away. away, crucify, crucify him. him. Pilate said, do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king except Caesar. So in the end, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. They then took charge of Jesus, and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha where they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the Jewish chief priests said to Pilate, You should, you should not, not write, write King, King of, of the Jews, Jews. But, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, Instead, instead of tearing it, let's throw dice to decide who is to have it. 
In this way, the words of scripture were fulfilled. They shed out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala, seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed. And to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. It was preparation day, and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a special day, was a special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. So instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he knows he speaks the truth and he gives it so that you may believe as well because all this happened to fulfill the words of scripture not one bone of his will be broken and again in another place scripture says they will look on the one whom they have pierced after this joseph of arimathea who was a disciple of jesus though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time. And he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. Sometimes, especially among the younger, the younger ones, I'll get the question of why did Jesus have to die, or could his death been avoided? If God was all-powerful, why couldn't he just, with a flick of a hand, absorb all our sins and be done with it, you know, to 
save humanity back because it was due to the fall of Adam, the fall of our first parents, that we incurred this original sin and have gone on sinning. So, by that action of Adam, the gates of paradise were closed. But if God was all-powerful, why couldn't he just open the gate and let us in? You know, why is it necessary to send someone to die for us? It is a question perhaps that many people may not think about because we either don't want to think about it or too lazy to think about it. But we really, really ponder the question. You realize that the answer is not really that complicated and yet sometimes it is not easy to accept either. In a sense, none of us are able to offer a ransom for our own life. We cannot expiate our own sins. We cannot, how shall I put it, we, we cannot just wipe away our own sins and enter into heaven. So, for that, you need an intermediary. We need someone who can so-called pay the ransom price for us. Because in a sense, we have been ransomed by death. And so, in order for us to be liberated, from darkness to light, a ransom has to be paid. So if you look throughout the Old Testament, and right up to the time of Jesus, the priests of the Levitical line, they will order, offer sacrifices for the expiation of sin. So you come bringing your offering, they will offer the animal burnt offering so that their sins may be forgiven. But you do that year after year after year. So we have one in Jesus whose death was necessary simply because it wiped away that sin forever. That means he, in that sense, is that bridge that brings us back to paradise. Now, the thing is this. Why then do we call it Good Friday? if it involves the death of a person. You know, why, why is it good? Somebody had to die. It's not that good one. So, lightning tell me otherwise. So, God telling me otherwise already. But then, good because it is good for us. Because we have been redeemed from our slavery to sin. Which is why it is good for us. We cannot redeem ourselves. And so we have a Redeemer who redeems us so that we can go back to God the Father. Now, we may not be able to relate to the crucifixion because in all honesty, I don't think any of us will be able to stomach it when we really see it. The closest we'll probably get to see it probably if you watch Mel Gibson's uh, The Passion of Christ. And even then, I think most of us cannot even finish that movie. It, it is so, uh, it's really hard to watch. But then, some of us, or maybe many of us, will know the effects of the crucifixion. Now, what, that, what do I mean by that? Some of us, or many of us, do experience being crucified. Not physically. No one will take us and crucify us on the cross. I hope not. But then, we are crucified in many ways. Just like Christ, when we do good, when we perform charitable acts, people applaud us, people praise us for what we do. And that is Christ, what Christ received as well. But then, after that, people turn their backs and say, crucify him. And I'm sure some of us would have experienced that as well, where perhaps we do something that made someone jealous, or someone fears us, or someone maybe don't like what we do, and they turn it against us and say, crucify this person. All the work that we have done is forgotten just because of that one single deed that people may not like. We are crucified because of fear, of jealousy, of greed. And this is why Jesus was crucified also. The chief priests and the scribes fear of losing their people. They are jealous of him because all attention is now on him rather on them. And Judas 
well, he had a free will, but he chose to betray Jesus for that money, for that 30 pieces of silver. So, any of us who have been betrayed and crucified will know how painful it is, especially if it's by someone who's close to us, whether it's because of the reasons I listed above, fear, greed, hatred, envy, any of these things. And it is really a painful experience. But we are called, like Christ, to bear that cross, to walk that road to our own Golgotha, to be crucified, because at the cross, we crucify not only our very self, but we crucify everything that is not in conformity with God, our ego, our pride, because that is the one that will rebel and say, you betray me, I betray you back. You hit me, I hit you back. Tooth for tooth, eye for an eye. But no, we are crucified, and everything that is not in conformity with what Christ taught us is crucified there. And when we are freed from that crucifixion, we leave everything there. In a sense, like Christ who will be resurrected, we too resurrect to become a new, a better person. And that is why we too should not run away from the crosses that we bear. It is difficult, it is painful, it is heavy. And very often, no one will accompany us on our journey. But by embracing the cross that God gives us, we uh, bear our sins and we also bear the sins of others so that they too can be liberated. But that requires a lot of courage, a lot of perhaps certainty in a sense that we know that God is walking with us. And we need to pray for that strength, for that grace, so that in bearing our crosses daily, we know that we are crucifying everything that is bad in us or everything that is not in conformity with God in us and leaving them behind and living toward the future with hope and better virtues. Tentusuanda 我们要记得我们是被创造的不是创造者所以如果我们不能赦免自己的罪当然要有一位来赦免我们的罪成就我们这里到天堂这一个很伟大的各位大人来解开天堂的门给我们那如果他是一定要被钉在十字架上为了我们而死而牺牲自己然后星期五我们中文我们是叫耶稣受难日但是英文讲的比较好了他是讲 Good Friday 但是有什么好一个人被钉在自己家长是好的事吗不是杀了一个人吗拿了一条命是好的事吗好的事是因为从由他的牺牲我们被得救我们就能够在上天堂天堂的门已经开启了给我们
所以就是好。但是另外一个问题就是，耶稣被带钉十字架上，我们能够感受到他的感觉吗？真的是不能，因为是一个非常非常痛的一个经验。但是我们自己在我们的每一天生活中，可能会体验到一些可能比较像。被钉在十字架上的那种经验，就是当我们被出卖的时候，可能有些人妒忌我们，还是真的是想害我们、恨我们、讨厌我们，他们就钉了我们在十字架上。不是说他真的把我们带至去十字架那边，真的钉我们在那边，只是可能钉我们自己的，呃。在讲人性，钉在那边，所以当我们被出卖的时候，我们可以感受到耶稣的感觉，因为人无论怎么样，他们都是人。你看，金斯法利赛人，他们为什么要钉耶稣在十字架上？他们就是妒忌，妒忌他。因为他已经很，他们把各司机跟法利赛人的那些门徒已经拉走了，然后害怕他现在越来越红，他们已经没有他们的地位了。啊，有些他，然后犹大，他是为了钱而出卖耶稣的，所以我们要问我问一问自己，我们是否有？害到别人被钉在十字架上吗？我们自己看看自己，问自己，我们是否有没有妒忌人家，呃，讨厌人家，恨人家，恨到我们真的不顶不顺他了，我们就真的是真的是钉他在十字架上，还是我们被出卖？无论如何，我们是像耶稣一样被天主召教。背我们的十字架，虽然可能没有人帮我们背，我们一个人行走，但是还是要背，因为苦路是叫苦路是有原因，是是因为苦。如果是不是苦路，难道叫苦路吗？一个人走当然是苦，所以当我们背的时候，背带被钉之后，钉的是什么？钉了我们，好像昨天我一直讲到。关于自大，关于骄傲，就是当我们被钉在十字架的时候，就钉了我们的骄傲，钉了我们的自大在那边。像耶稣钉了过后被埋葬、复活，变成了一个新的一个人。我们同样也，如果我们被拿下来的时候，我们也变成新的一个人。我们的自大，我们的骄傲已经放在十字架上。留在那边，不不用理了。但是我们不能一个人背十字架，我们人是无能的，我们是需要天主的力量，天主的恩宠。如果天主不给我们恩宠，我们也不能每天背着我们的十字架。而我相信，天主的恩典是够我们用的。中途，圣保禄也是很清楚的告诉我们，天主赐给我们的恩典是足够的，但是我们要每天要求，求天主的恩典，能给我们力量，能够走这条路，走完的时候，我们就到天堂，就到我们呃所得到的善报。Let us stand.
for the Holy Church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and peace, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Please kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the Pope. Let us pray also for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, <coughs> who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Almighty and living God, by whose decrees all things are founded, look with favour on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by their mask maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For all orders and decrees, of the faithful. Let us pray also for our Bishop Julian, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gifts of your grace, all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the catechumens who will be baptized tomorrow. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide their ears, the ears of their inmost hearts, and unlock the gates of His mercy, that, having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offsprings, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unity of Christians. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in His 
one church. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in a bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wait,基督徒和一,为犹太人,请为犹太人祈祷,使他们首先听到了我们的主,天主的圣言,求天主赐他们热意敬爱他的圣名,忠实遵守他的盟约。请跪下。全能永生的天主请尚未信仰基督的人，请为尚未信仰基督的人们祈祷，求天主以圣神的真光照耀他们，领导他们走上救恩的道路。请跪下。全能永生的天主求你使那些不承认基督在此诚实都能找到宇宙的真主，请跪下。全能永生的天主,你创造了整个人类,使我们渴望地寻找你,并在找到你以后,而得到安息。
，因而欣然承认你是唯一的真天主和人类的之父。以上所求，只靠我们的主基督。阿门。为政府官员，请为政府的一切官员祈祷，求天主按照他的圣意指引他们的思想和心神，使他们能为人民谋求真正的平安和自由。请跪下。全能永生的天主，你知道人心的渴望，也保护人民的权利。求你仁慈地专顾所有所有身负公职的人们，使世界各地依赖你的助佑，都能获享持久的平安、幸福的生活，以及信仰的自由。以上所求是靠我们的主基督。阿门。为遭受苦难的人，亲爱的兄弟姐妹们，请向全能的天主父祈祷，求他扫除世上的一切错谬，消除疾病，驱逐疾病，弥平战乱。释放俘虏，使旅行者感到安全，流浪者返回家园，患病者早日康复，临终者获得救援。请跪下。全能永生的天主，你是悲痛者的安慰，劳苦者的力量。在患难中呼求你的人，求你扶听他们的祈祷，使他们赖你的仁慈，获得所寄需的助佑。以上所求，是靠我们的主基督。阿门。We now come to the second part of our Good Friday liturgy, which continues to unfold with the adoration of the Holy Cross.
Sorry, the cross is a bit heavy. Ah, the shoes are a bit heavy. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us Okay, my dear faithful, you saw what I did in front of the cross. Uh, that is how you are to venerate the cross today. No one needs to kiss the cross, okay? Father Philip, myself, we have kissed the cross on your behalf already. Yeah, the rest of you, as you come forward, bow, and those who can genuflect, you genuflect. Those who can't, bowing is enough, okay? You may proceed.
प्लीज स्टैन At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me a protection in mind and body, and a healing remedy. Jennifer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we will depart from the church after the blessing, all in silence. Huh? We preserve the silence today and we continue to reflect upon the passion of our Lord. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honoured the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.